Welcome to the Essential Self-Care Podcast, where we talk about all things self-care for those of us who are, let's face it, too busy for self-care. It's time to bring that same compassion that you offered everyone else in your life to yourself as well. In this podcast, you'll hear real life stories of how self-care transformed people's lives as they were going through life's storms. You'll learn practical, actionable tools to begin the self-care journey yourself as well. Because like I always say, small changes make a large impact. I'm your host, Dr. Sheetal Ajmani. I'm a physician, best-selling author, and the founder of Radiant Living Institute, where I guide people to get unstuck and learn to live radiantly again. Through my signature program, Reclaim Your Radiance, you'll reclaim your worth, renew your energy, and restore your happiness in your life, career, and relationships. To get started, download your free guidebook, Six Simple Yet Powerful Steps to Create Your Radiant Life at RadiantLivingInstitute.com. Quick disclaimer before we get started, the information in this podcast is for educational purposes only and is not medical advice. Always seek the advice of your own medical practitioner and or mental health provider about your specific situation. Now, let's get started. Today, I have the pleasure of welcoming Brandon Eastman to the Essential Self-Care Podcast. Brandon is a peak performance coach and the host of the Be Better broadcast. I was introduced to Brandon through a mutual friend, Tanya MFK, who is on episodes 11 and 15 of this podcast. So if you haven't tuned into those episodes yet, definitely check those out after you listen to this one. I also recently had the opportunity to be a guest on Brandon's podcast, and we had such a great conversation. I just had to invite him here to share his self-care story with you too. So welcome to the Essential Self-Care Podcast, Brandon. Awesome. Thank you, Sheetal. It's great to be here. Yeah, I'm so excited to have you here to continue our conversation from when I was a guest on your podcast, but this time hearing more about your self-care journey. I know it's just going to be so powerful and really resonate with our listeners. So I'm excited to dive right in. Can you share a little bit about a time in your life where self-care became no longer an option, but an absolute priority for you and what that looked like? Absolutely. So this point that I'm about to share with you in my life has led me to beginning my business and beginning the podcast and everything that I'm doing now, this pivotal moment has led me to. So when when I was 18, I moved into sales. And at that point in my life, I believed that money was the one key area where when you had this area on lock, when you were making a lot of money, when you were financially successful, everything else would follow. That's just the belief I had. Not sure where it came from, but that's the belief I had. And I did very well financially. And in 19, 20, I was earning over six figures. I didn't know what to do with all of it. I was spending it. I was buying all these things I didn't need, right? We all know the saying, it's not about how much you make. It's about what you do with it. It's about how much you keep. And it got to the point where I was 21, making more money than I've ever made in my life in sales. And I was 60 pounds heavier than I am now. I was unhappy with where I was. I'd look in the mirror and I'd look at my body and I, I was very unsatisfied with where I'd let myself go. I had a lot of negative self-talk. And when I was in that moment, it was hard to see it, but there was no doubt that I was very depressed in that moment. And I was blaming and I had excuses and all these different things. And my self-care moment was when I had a mentor come into my life who said, Brandon, you want to become a leader inside of this sales company. But how can you expect other people to follow you as their leader if you can't even lead yourself? Mm. And those words struck home and they were, he said it in harsher words than that. It wasn't that clear and succinct, maybe a couple swear words in there. And I was like, what do I need to do? And he said, you need to read this book. And he gave me the book called The Secret by Rhonda Byrne. Mm -hmm. And this book, for those who haven't read it, it's all about the law of attraction. What you think about, you will bring into your life. What energy you send out, you attract more of that energy to you. And it was very cheesy stuff at the time. I was like, how is this going to help me? But I decided to put it into action. And I did. And within six months, by following what I'm sure we're going to talk about, I was able to release 60 pounds. I was able to eliminate over $20,000 of debt. I was able to most importantly, feel better about myself. And like I mentioned earlier, that moment and that process has led me to where I am today. It's it's led to this conversation today. That's wonderful. That is so powerful. There's so many great nuggets in in that and what you just shared. So I want to reflect on a little bit of that. The first being what you started out with is that this journey led you to beginning your business, the impact that you have in the world right now through that, through your podcast. And, you know, one thing that I often say is that life's challenges are the greatest catalyst for self-empowerment. Life challenges are also often what give us the momentum and fuel to pivot 
or to change or to create or to grow in a particular way in our life. Because when things are going smoothly, what's the impetus to change anything, right? right? It's often when something happens, whether that's an internal reflection, like like you shared of like, hey, there are these aspects of my life. Yeah, I achieved on the money side, but there are these other aspects of my life, my my health, my physical health, my mental health, my emotional health that are not where I want them to be, right? And I'm not feeling happy, right? And so I think that also is, a very important point and distinction is that so often we also focus on the external things in our world to bring us our happiness. And we think when I achieve such and such, I'm going to feel happy. The world will be perfect and beautiful, (laughs) right? And whether that's a certain achievement in your career, whether that's a financial goal, whether that's a relationship goal, whatever it is, so often we can attach ourselves And our capacity to feel happy to that external thing so tightly, right? And then often, like you said, when we reach it, maybe we find that there's something missing still, right? And so I think that's just a really powerful distinction. And and it's part of why I do also the work that I do and that Radiant Living Institute is called Radiant Living Institute because I truly believe that a radiant life begins from within, right? So So the process that I guide people on is really kind of going within to then to find that happiness and peace there first, right? And which is quite in alignment and resonates with what you were sharing with your journey so far as you were getting into with the secret of the things that you think, right? What you think about, how you feel, all of that leads to kind of what you attract in the world, right? So what is that? That's starting from within. That's starting with your thoughts. That's starting with how you feel, right? Making a conscious decision about that. So can you share a little bit about your journey from there. So you shared the results that you experienced, right? After you kind of got that wake up call from your mentor, read the book, The Secret, learned from it, applied those tools and principles. You shared some of the results with regards to your your health, your business, but can you share a little bit more also about the journey that it took you on from there? Absolutely. You mentioned it, you mentioned a few things there. The first thing that you mentioned was we tend to focus on sometimes only what we're doing well. And for me, it was just the financial piece that I was focused on. And you mentioned also it, it's important for us to focus on the emotions and the thoughts that we're experiencing. And I 100% agree. And emotional health for me is one of the five key areas of life that I focus on and stay aware of on, on a daily basis. And in my book, Be Extraordinary, that's chapter one is emotional health. But it's fascinating because now I look back at that and I think, would I reorder the chapters based on how the journey actually went? And I think the answer is yes, because it wasn't my thoughts and emotions that changed first. That was the catalyst for everything else. I was still that same person who was thinking, you know, am I worth it? Am I happy about myself? Do I have what it takes? Do I know what I want in this world? Do I know who I want to become? Like it didn't start there. For me, it started with going to the gym. And for me, when I looked at the five key areas of my life at the very beginning of that journey, the only area of life that I was doing semi-okay in was financially. And then it followed with relationships after that, because I was engaged at the time to my now wife and we're celebrating our sixth wedding anniversary in two days, which is super cool. So I was doing well in those two areas, but I looked at the one area that was dragging all the other ones underwater. And that was my physical health. When I looked at the reason I was unhappy, it was my body. And when I said that my mentor shared some harsh words with me, he said, how can other people respect you if you can't respect you, right? But he was actually a power lifter. So I made out in that way because my mentor was someone who was in great physical shape. So I started going to the gym. And what I noticed was within a few times of going to the gym, maybe a week or two of going, because I only went three times a week. And still to this day, I, I only go to the gym and lift three times a week. And I stay in peak physical health by doing that. He helped me to transform every other area of my life by focusing on that one area that was dragging all the other ones down. So for everyone listening, my challenge to you and what I would invite you to do, if you will, is to take a look at the five areas of your life. When you look at your physical health, where would you rate that on a scale of one to five? When you look at your financial health, your emotional health, your relationships, and your spirituality, where would you rate yourself on a scale of one to five? 
And this isn't to say, okay, now we're going to tackle each one of these areas. Let's go. Let's take action on each one. That's not realistic. It's very hard to balance all those things at once. So assess where are you at your best? What area is your best? And which area is the one that is holding all the other ones down? Because what you'll notice is a rising tide raises all boats. When you focus on that one area that's holding all the other ones back, everything else will improve as a result. It's kind of magical how it happens and it's wild how it happens, but it makes it that much more easy and it makes it that much more attainable because now we're like, okay, I only need to focus on this one area and it will make everything that much better. Absolutely. You know, there's this, and it makes complete sense to me because there's this ripple effect essentially, right? Anything that you do in one area of your life it does affect the other areas of your life, right? So often we think of everything as being really separate. Like we think of the physical, mental, emotional, all being separate, but actually it is all related. It's all connected. And so that's in terms of kind of overall well-being, right? Physical, mental, emotional, but that's also connected with how you show up at, at work, how you show up in your business, how you show up in your relationships. Like this is all connected. And so if you start working on one of those areas, it does affect the others in some way, shape, or other, right? And that can be in a quote unquote positive direction if you're working on something in a, in the positive way or the negative direction if you're completely not addressing one one of those areas, right? So it can work in any direction, but everything is related. Everything is related. So that makes complete sense. And then it also made sense to me, you know, the aspect of and, and I would invite our listeners, you know, that being said, look at these five key areas as Brandon mentioned, see which one you're going to choose to work on. And based on kind of maybe what's holding kind of the rest down or maybe one that's resonating with you the most right now, but it makes sense to me with regards to that physical aspect. And I want to just kind of expand on that a little bit here. You know, sometimes it can be really hard. And again, part of this depends on, on a lot of things, kind of our own individual nature, our own individual personalities, what's going on in our life situations, a lot of different things, but a lot of times in general, it can be harder to tap into or start with kind of the more subtle layers, things like our thoughts, things like our feelings, things like our emotions, right? Kind of those subtle layers, right? And it can often be a bit easier. I'm not saying easy, but I'm saying sometimes easier to focus on things that are a bit more gross. By gross, I mean physical, like yeah. solid matter, right? And that's why it's interesting. I'm going to use just a little analogy or example here. I often describe yoga. So, you know, part of my background is in yoga, meditation, Ayurveda. And so I often describe yoga as like the gateway into meditation and mindfulness, right? And there's a reason for that. And there's a reason even, you know, in the this 5,000 year old tradition, yogis would start with a physical practice and then sit for meditation. And part of that is one, yes, to prepare the body so that you'll feel comfortable in a seated position for a while. Another is it's easier to bring your awareness to something physical and then move into the more subtle layers, yes. if that makes sense. So I just thought that would, just a little kind of interesting um, insight and reflection on, on what you shared. Now, you identified through your journey these five key areas to look at in terms of overall well-being, physical, financial, emotional, relational, and spiritual. Now, I know that this journey also led you to create a process, a process that you call the five P's. Can you explain a little bit more of kind of how this led, journey led you to develop that and what those five P's are? Absolutely. So when I started to make these massive shifts in my life, I began to move up into leadership inside of this large sales company. And I started to train new salespeople, which eventually led me to training other leaders as well inside the company. And I discovered that I asked myself, what's the best way I can help these, these individuals? And the answer wasn't to train them simply on sales and leadership. The answer was, how can I help these individuals make these same massive shifts in their life the way that I was able to do it? which led to this process called the five Ps. And I found that once people started to apply these five Ps in their life, practically instantly, they were able to make giant gains in whatever key area of life they were focused on. So if that area was financially, if it was relationships, if it was physical, whatever it is, now, once you've identified that area, implement these five key Ps is what I call them, the five Ps of peak performance and do it in order. 
the order is very important. So the first P, and I'll go through them very quickly because people can always, you know, go to the podcast to, to go deeper into each one. But the first P is you have to create a plan. You can't go from where you are to where you want to be if you don't know where you want to be in the first place, right? When you go on vacation and you're going to somewhere that you don't know, you're never going to get there if you don't put it in the GPS. So if you were setting the GPS of your life, where would the destination be, right? So create a plan. What's, what's the outcome? What do you want? For me, the outcome was actually an emotion. I wanted to feel better about myself, which then leads to the second part. The second P is you have to power the plan. If you don't have fuel, then the car is not gonna go anywhere for your vacation. You've gotta put gas in the engine. So gas in the engine for us as human beings is twofold. It's your physical body, and doing things and implementing routines in your life, like what you mentioned with yoga and Ayurveda and, and all these different physical practices, because emotion is energy in motion, right? Energy, there requires motion in order to feel those different emotions. So the second P is you got to power the plan physically, but also emotionally, right? The third P is aligning with purpose. I stumbled across my purpose. And I wish we had more time because I'd like to ask you when you came across yours, I think we touched on it in our conversation on, on the Be Better broadcast. But once I aligned with my purpose, that's when everything opened up for me. And it opened up in terms of fulfillment. It opened up in terms of me waking up each morning, knowing that I'm on the right path. And that really started once I started helping other people to implement these practices. I believe that the third P purpose happens. And I believe that you align with purpose once you start contributing and helping other people in a meaningful way using your experiences and your skills and your learnings to do so. And I don't believe, I, I, I'm sure it can happen, but I don't believe you just decide what that is and start doing it. I believe that you stumble across it based on the circumstances your life brings you. Like you said, difficulty is the greatest catalyst of change, right? You said it much more eloquently than I just did, but it's, it's very true. Then the fourth P is people. And people is fascinating because the only reason we're talking today is I was introduced to Tanya MFK and I had Tanya on the broadcast and we had a great time and she's become a friend of mine and she introduced me to you. So the only reason this is happening is because we've both surrounded ourselves with the type of people that we want to be more like or people who are on a similar journey to us. So once you have that purpose aligned, it's time to find other people who are living that same purpose and surround yourself with people who you want to be more like, right? You are the three to five people you spend the most time around. We've all heard that quote, which leads us to the fifth P, which is the most important, which is progress. To make progress, it's not about doing tons of different things on a daily basis. It's about making 1% progress towards that plan each day. Even if you would consider today a loss, what's one thing you could do today that would move you closer to that end destination? It's not about doing a ton of things. It's about focusing on 1% each day, because if we look at the, the law of exponentials, 1% of growth each day after a year is 37% growth. Imagine how much you could grow after five years right? It's over hundred percent growth. And in five years, you can practically change your entire reality. And I believe you can even do it sooner. So once you apply those five P's after you've chosen that one key area of life that you're going to focus on, everything will change for you and your reality. I've seen it happen for salespeople, for leaders, for business owners, for, for fathers, for mothers, for everybody. We're, we're all human and we're, we're sharing this experience. Absolutely. Wow. Thank you so much for going through the five P's. I realize I'm going to be doing a little bit um, more alliteration here, but <laughs> the five P's are so powerful. Like that was, that's a really powerful process. And so I really appreciate you going through that. And it's interesting. I'm seeing a lot of similarities with, with my six step method, reclaim your radiance as well. Of, I'm not going to go through that in complete detail right now, but for <laughs> listeners, you can find that on my website as well, Radiant Living Institute and Reclaim Your Radiance. Um, but, you know, I, I incorporate a lot of similar ideas and practices and principles, you know, creating a plan, taking inventory, having some vision of, of where you want to go, of creating empowering daily routines, right, to fuel that, to tap it, continue to tap into that clarity. I talk about purpose or dharma. And a lot of times we can get kind of stuck on that. I find that people can kind of get stuck on that. Like, I don't know my purpose. What is my purpose? And one thing I often will share with people also, one way is that one way that I think of purpose is also showing up. Yeah. Just showing up. Like, how do you want to show up each day? And, and, and I think you kind of how you described it 
is 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 in alignment with that as well of of like how are you contributing how are you showing up right mm-hmm. and that could be how are you showing up for your family how are you showing up for your friends how are you showing up in your career right but so often we tend to think of it just in in terms of career right but it can mean so many things and so i often also advise people not to get attached on figuring it out just like you said you you kind of it it kind of comes through sort of experiencing and doing all of these things and have and cultivating greater self-awareness and thinking about how you want to show up and just showing up even. Yes. So so that's really powerful. And then celebrating that progress. I think that's one of the biggest keys to fulfillment that generally we are lacking is we tend to, I was going to say we tend to wait until we achieve something really quote unquote big to celebrate, but I can't even say that. Because often, even when we do achieve that quote unquote really big thing, we don't take the time to celebrate that. Then we just still run on to the next thing, right? And so taking that moment, taking those moments to celebrate those that stepwise progress along the way daily on a regular basis is so important and I think really can help cultivate that sense of inner fulfillment and inner happiness and contentment. And I think that's just a really powerful piece as well. So thank you so much for sharing this. I feel like we could dive deeper into sort of each of these topics and segments so much more. But for today, you know, just thank you so much for laying out this framework, for sharing your journey with us, and then laying out this framework of kind of five key areas in our life to kind of think about and and just kind of see sort of where you stand in terms of how you feel about those areas in your own life. And there's no right or wrong. It's not how someone else feels about those areas in your life, it's tapping into your own inner clarity and and seeing how you feel about that, right? And then laying out these five Ps of plan, power, purpose, people, progress. So Brandon, if anyone, you're doing amazing work, you have the Be Better broadcast, um, you have a lot of amazing products and services that people can use to dive deeper into these topics. Can you share a little bit more about where they can find information about you and the work that you're doing? Yeah, absolutely. And thanks for the opportunity to share that. You can find more at BeBetterIndustries.com. And that's where you'll find the broadcast. That's where you'll find the different things that I offer. I think the best place to start is my book. It's called Be Extraordinary, Your Guide to Self-Mastery. And this entire book outlines the five key areas that we talked about at the very beginning, as well as the five P's. And you don't even have to buy it. If you go to bebetterindustries.com slash book, you can download a digital copy for free because I I know if you're anything like me, you're impulsive and you just want to get it now and and start going to work on that area that you decided. So go to that website and you can download it for free. And that's a great way to begin this next stage of your journey. Wonderful. Thank you so much for uh, sharing that wonderful resource with us. And thanks again for being here. Thank you, Sheetha. It's been great. And I appreciate the opportunity. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to subscribe, leave a positive review, and share this episode with someone you know. And remember, your free guide, Six Simple Yet Powerful Steps to Create Your Radiant Life, is waiting for you at RadiantLivingInstitute.com. Download it today.